Unpaid care work is the kind of work that people do in taking care of each other and building up each other's capabilities. In particular, very young children, people who are sick, need a pretty significant amount of attention and care. And very often it is women who do this kind of work. The main characteristic of unpaid work is that it's not directly paid or remunerated. Now, in theory, this kind of work should be counted as part of GDP. For example, if you take a country like Argentina, a calculator that were done by feminist economists and statisticians give us a figure of about 7% of GDP. And in a much less developed country like Tanzania, it was even seen to be a much higher figure, like 63%. One study included also a case study of Switzerland. What was found out was if you added the unpaid care work that is done in Switzerland and you value it, it's almost as big as the banking and insurance industry in Switzerland. But to really value this work, I think what is really important is to appreciate its significance for any society or economy. So this work is really what makes you know, the society and the economy tick. In many ways, this kind of work can be seen as the solid foundation on which official industries and services and economies and schools and universities sit. Without this kind of work, it would be very difficult to even think of a society that can function. One kind of universal fact seems to be that in nearly all human societies, it is often upon women this kind of work falls. What we say, it's highly feminized. We have some data which showed that something like 75% of all unpaid care work is carried out by women and girls. So this is a very unequal distribution between men and women. In fact, it does penalize women because taking on the bulk of this work often carries a penalty in terms of not being able to have a full-time job with a decent wage, not being able to accumulate a pension, not getting all of the benefits that come from formal sector employment. So the penalties are many, even though the benefits to, to society are huge. Redistributing care is really, really critical. So that really involves a rethinking and redoing of our kind of social relationships. States can go a long way in terms of making sure that there are good quality um, public services, childcare services, but also you try and change your expectations and social norms so that women and men can share those responsibilities more equally. So with more policies, you also increase the social expectation that more can be done to redistribute the work and not to just say this is a private matter and it's for families to deal with, which very often falls on women and girls.